Love Podcast Aid Nonsense, the Politics Joke Podcast, ladies and gentlemen! Yay! Yay. Lick the stamp and send it, boys. <laughs> Lick the stamp and send it, boys. We're so back. Yeah, absolutely. We're so back. This is the first th- three-person pod since the four-hour. Since, <laughs> since the incident. <laughs> since, <laughs> yeah. since, Ollie, since Ollie was forced to, to take leave from work. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Look, the HR review came back in full, and I've been reinstated into my <laughs> position. So <laughs> that's all we need to say about that. Uh, two you know weeks suspension. People, though, were wondering pay. about the fish. Oh, yeah. Person glove. Person glove, yeah. Paul and Joe. Laura's got, the producer Laura has the fish now. As with all the Person glove, how many hands can you get inside the fish? <laughs> how, how long can they survive if I hold them in my hands <laughs> out of the water? Probably not long. Why'd you miss them? Do you want them back? No. Have you heard about goldfish rewilding and that they get. <laughs> <laughs> no, I read it over Christmas that they get. Um, really big like outrageously long they actually grow quite big yeah no no, no but when, specifically when they're rewilded right okay. they get like uh, uh, ridiculously large to the point that they can't swim anymore they're just sort of like big how big like yeah, that was that was me being the goldfish just yeah my sister told her boyfriend that i ate the fish oh. after <laughs> And it's not to his credit, he believed, <laughs> like, like, like Ozzy Osbourne. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He absolutely, he, be- he believed it. Which... Can you imagine if, like, the last shot of that four-hour podcast <laughs> was you? <laughs> I'll do it! <laughs> when you, um, some animals released into the world, they do change quite dramatically. Pigs. Really? Yeah, grow long hair, tusks, when they become wild boar, yeah. Well, you don't become wild... Well. Well. You know, they don't they grow tough, tough really. Yeah, yeah. Just yeah. think about Robin. I just can't tell if you've seen the bit. No, I'm being deadly serious. If you've got a, pig, a farm pig, yeah, yeah. it grows tusks. Yeah, yeah. It's, not, it's a different species. Fucking Google it, bro. It's not a different species. Am I, the same animal. Am I misunderstanding pig biology? <laughs> no. That's, That's what happens. I remain cynical of that. I'm not going to check it. I will. Any excuse? <laughs> Wild <laughs> boar. Cats. This is why they tune in. <laughs> <laughs> They've had 10 days without us and they'll be like, nah, that was, that's, this isn't good content. <laughs> Click off. Retention rate up to the point of the bore chat. Um, so they undergo morphological changes, probably triggered by <laughs> epigenes in response to their environment and living conditions. Um, so they should grow tusk. They get, they get all furry. Yeah. So they're technically feral pigs. Thirty to forty feral pigs. How do you in my yard? How do you handle thirty to forty feral pigs? Well, feral hogs. I think feral hogs. Are they bit. shaved when they're in? No, I think it's teeth? just. I think it's a product of. I don't want to be a product of my environment. I want my environment to be a product of me. The departed. All oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. It's no? Hunter S. Thompson. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was amazing. <laughs> Haven't had a single beer. No, you're just on this. Did we have a good New Year? And Merry Christmas. Very peaceful. Yeah. Yeah, fine. Wow. <laughs> he was in a mood today. <laughs> no, I, well, I woke up at 1.30 and couldn't go back to sleep, so. Yeah, that explains it. I'm slightly moody. But also, you no, know, my New Year was he bad. He asked you how you were. Uh, when? Just then. He said, how was it? It's like a, how was New Year? It's a banal question, isn't it? Well, in New, New Year was, New Year was the first New Year after my friend passed, and so we were all together, you know, after that. Mm. So, sorry, I didn't want to bring down the mood, but since you pressed me on it. <laughs> do you feel bad now, Ed? Yeah, I do. <laughs> sorry. Yeah. Sorry for asking. Well, if I you, you question. shouldn't have killed her, so. Fucking <laughs> hell. <laughs> what a start. Absolutely. It's so I hope great none to be of my back. friends here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I hope they don't either. I'm not going to explain that one. Uh, so great to be back on the pod. Absolutely. Mm. To be here. Is it different from doing live radio? If, um, if you don't know, Ollie was on LBC a lot. Do you, do you know what? Actually, I um I was warmed. There was a lot of um positive feedback in the subreddit. Oh, there was actually. There was a lot of people being like, "Oh, I enjoyed this hour," but they were obviously listening, which is yeah. surprising because it was like a fucking four a.m. Why are you comforted by that and not when I text you at the time to say <laughs> that was good? This is good. <laughs> Ava, Ava and I swap text messages at about usually about half four in the morning or something, and she'll be on her way to 
some kind of news studio. She sends me a photo of her with like a rolly hanging out of her mouth and like, this is a fantastic hour. I'm so <laughs> glad you did it. Also well, glad we've cleared up that like, I'm also on my way to work. I'm not just like up early. Like, no, oh, I, oh, he's on the out. radio. Still out. <laughs> there are my three hour listening to Ollie. So, yes. Someone did the, uh, DM me, um, a, a colleague, a journalistic colleague uh, on their way home from a ginormous night out in their own words, sobering up, listening to me, talking to people about addiction. Uh, whilst he was sat in the back of a taxi, so I, I think that's when people catch it. Yeah, because like our our lot taxi hits. You're not fucking up at four a.m., aren't you? I mean, come on. No, do me a favor. Not many people are. To be fair, I'm the only one who is. Yeah, I, I yeah, I I'm really creeped out by the uh, very late night now. I'm like a a very big leave before two o'clock. If I'm out, out, nothing good happens after midnight. Is the maxim, isn't it? I think midnight's a bit early. Yeah. But you know, I, I think midnight to two is a sweet spot. It is, isn't it? Post two, that's your Q zone. Is silly. That's prime Ed Campbell. Uh, post two is like that's a mistake. I d- mistakes can be made. Ideally, you want to be yeah. Well, th- there's all these feral pigs about, isn't there? So you, you know, <laughs> you be but, careful. Um, go off the London street. has been overrun by feral, feral pigs. But you want to be kind of skincare done, teeth brushed in bed. I think by like half one, quarter to two. That's when I wake up to go and do the radio. Yeah. <laughs> so bleak. <laughs> it is quite bleak. I actually, saw, I saw, um, when I was like passing like ships in the night, one of our, um, your dear friend and one of my LBC colleagues, uh, Shiv, um, she goes in to do like reporting shifts and we passed each other in Pret as I was leaving to get like a coffee to get myself awake because she was going in to get her coffee before the show and she said to me I don't know which of these is more bleak <laughs> <laughs> me coming in at this time or you leaving and she was like it's definitely you That's still funny. <laughs> what you're doing is definitely more bleak um, <laughs> it is quite it, it feels kind of like you're getting out to go on holiday but then once you do it five times in a row it's not really oh, like it's the wor- <laughs> it is still ultimately work it is still work yeah cool work it's good yeah don't get me wrong happy still work very happy good shows you like them I did yeah I mean, like, apart from that one, she texted me a complaint about something. So <laughs> really, yeah, what happened? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, I just, I, Go on. I just didn't like what he had to. I thought what he had to say about Taylor Swift was cheap. Who, Ollie? <laughs> yeah, when he read someone else's. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <right. laughs> <laughs> Ollie didn't provide enough balance to pro Taylor Swift. Like, what's the offcom ruling on on Taylor Swift? No, I quoted. I, someone had written a piece about Taylor Swift, which I quoted. Mm. Which was quite harsh on Taylor Swift. Oh, this is a New Statesman one. Yes, yes. Yeah, but it was. Look, I'm at, I'm going to say it was actually a very well. Because after have you read it now? Well, yeah. Now I have because, <laughs> because I forced it because, to you. Because you read out a bit of it, and I thought, well, he's done it now, so I might as well actually read it. And I thought that's that's a really well put together piece, and that's great. However, I'm very much on the side of sometimes girls can just enjoy things, mm. and that's fine. Mm. Do you know, like sometimes. Th- th- it doesn't have to be a big conversation. Like, I don't hear these big takedowns being written about men. And, okay, maybe it's not particularly, it's not feminist to re-release all your albums and make us buy them all again. But still, I enjoy it. It's yeah. a pastime that I was, enjoy. That was actually one of the things I found most compelling. There was, you know, when all like, the Barbie takes were coming out. And I read one that was basically like, what if there doesn't need to be some kind of feminist message? What if... The film is just an expression of feminine joy. Mm. Mm-hmm. And maybe that's fine. Yeah. Maybe it doesn't have to prove a higher point. Like you lot are watching the same men kick around a ball every single week. And Let you men get enjoy so things. excited. And I don't good for a men's mental health. Yeah. I don't sit here going like, oh my God, she'll be sports washing. She'll be fucking coming for Matt <laughs> next. <laughs> <laughs> And let me tell you, Eva, you can pry a nice cold madri from my cold, dead hands. Do you know, I went to the pub over Christmas and I said, oh, I'm, you know, doing the round. And someone said a madri. I just, I went, oh, do you actually want? <laughs> 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 you assumed it was a joke. Well, that's the beer you have when there's nothing, you know, when like, I don't know, a hell or your, an Australia isn't available. Mm-hmm. When your men's mental health is at an all time low. Yeah. Yeah. You don't, you don't offer the You're literally about to put yourself. Yeah. That's the only cure. That's not. The beer of choice. Oh, that's actually sparked another thought in my head, which is I'm I'm not sure about non-alcoholic beer. I don't know why, but it's annoying me. Why? Because a lot of people are moving into doing dry January mm-hmm. and that's absolutely fine. I, I'm definitely cutting way, way back on my drinking. I might not drink at all. Didn't feel the need to tweet about it. But <laughs> um, also, I think that there's something odd about 
exchanging your normal lager for a non-alcoholic lager mm. unless you actually do like the taste of non-alcoholic. Have you, so have you ever had a Guinness Zero? Yes, I have. It's good, isn't it? But you know, the only thing I'd say about it, they always make me make me feel a bit weird. Non-alcoholic beer. In what sense? I don't know if it's like maybe like the gluten is more it's potent or something. Yeah, they are a bit <laughs> you, you do. But like <laughs> it does feel like you're drinking like bread. Yeah. And you're just having like a super carby. It does not feel like that. Beer. And there's no upside, basically. And That's you could have a really nice... Thing over here. I, thought, I, thought, I thought it was <laughs> Mr. Watching His Mouth Grows. Yeah, uh, Mr. Celiac. Um, <laughs> it's a combination of being celiac. I'm not celiac. No, I, I think it's good. If you were like, you've got to drive home, but you want to hang out, you want a little bit more time in the pub mm. with the boys, you throw in like a Guinness Zero. Do you know what I mean? Obviously, never drink like never drink at all and drive. Just don't don't bother. Just zero alcohol. But if someone was to want to have a pint and then drive, it's also as well if you. It feels weird having like multiple pints of coke. Oh no! I was going like, to say I would I would opt for a big pint of coke. But, mm. but if you're having more than one drink, I think it's a way of feeling involved. Yeah. Um, orange juice and lemonade see I think that's yeah. actually the problem mm. you need to feel involved so you have a non-alcoholic beer mm. you can feel involved with a lime and soda black currant and soda as well that's oh, that, a bomb. That's black a currant one. lemonade is good as well yeah Yeah, but then there. you've got to pay the premium draft but then so Sambuca you know so fucking <laughs> so, <laughs> black currant and Sambuca <laughs> do you know um, the worst drink a, a landlord was telling me about I was talking about snake bite you know, mm. remember you used to have snake bite yeah. at uni big time and he was like you know what that's made of and I was like it's like, yeah, it's just a mixture of all the alcohols. He's like, yeah, and we get it out of the drain. <laughs> <laughs> like all of the... The foam. The, Wait, is it pre, it's not, no. not a pre-packaged thing, is it? No, you no, know when, it, you yeah, know when it drops into the... Yeah, yeah. The trays. When, the trays. It's but, that. Uh, I've, I've watched them being that made... That must as, be a joke. I've, I've watched them being made as not that. <laughs> <laughs> he was deadly serious. Yeah, he was. Snake bites, this is bizarre. Whatever the, the combination of ingredients to snake bite was, whatever that combined into, used to give me such a weird rash all over my body. <laughs> I used to go like bright red. It was like minor allergy to like that specific combination of alcohols. A dear friend of mine um, loved Prosecco. Loved it with all of her heart. Mm -hmm. More so than probably her closest family members. That's how much she loved Prosecco. She was like queen of the girlies with the Prosecco. Mm -hmm. Out all the time. Start of drinks, bottle of Prosecco. You can read the criticism about her in the New Statesman this week. (laughs) (laughs) Whatever happened to feminine joy? Well, let me tell you. Biology. (laughs) She... She discovered she would quite often after a night out, she'd wake up and like be very red in the face or have a rash. And the doctors told her, You are allergic to Prosecco. God. Is there. I don't Can know, women not have anything? I don't know who this is. And so I'm just suggesting is it possible that she had so much Prosecco that she ended up like in a bed bug ridden boy's bed? Oh my God. It was like <laughs> single, single pillow, unwashed she sheets, she was allergic dust to the, mites. Her, his pillow that had been washed in her for long. No, but I think there was an element of it which was. Total consumption was so high that it had, it had triggered the allergic response. So there, there is a, a bit of it being too much prosecco. I think I can't remember quite closely. Before we get into the actual proper politics, which I feel we probably should at a minute. <laughs> yeah. How often should you wash your bed sheets? Weekly. Yeah. Yeah. Weekly. Glad we're all in agreement on that. Yeah. Well, you were looking think... to me as if like you were going to be, like expecting me to be like, four weeks, six weeks. <laughs> yeah, I thought a year, you might annually. have because he would be weekly because he's he's wife man, you know. Yeah. Wife guy. And so he is a weekly, whereas... I wash them daily for her. Yeah. I, I, I am the, the bedsheet. What, what happens in then, there that needs to be done oh daily? God. Nothing, nothing. <laughs> all his shit's in the bed every, every night. time. And he has to bed again. All shit stains out. saying to me, you wouldn't have to wash the sheets all the time if you start shitting yourself, <laughs> Oliver. My housemate at uni had a, a peeing fetish, and so she had to wash her sheets all the time. Would you well, let's talk more about that. Come on. <laughs> would you not just, why would you do it in the bed? Yeah, it was me. <laughs> <laughs> not me. I'm joking. I'm joking. What is a peeing fetish? Just oh, babe, come, come on, grow yeah. up. No, no, no. Why isn't like she's peeing or, or someone's peeing on her? Basically what it is, yeah. it's like you get into your pyjamas. It's like real cosy. You want to go to bed and you just do a little pee in a teacup and then you get into bed, cosy up. <laughs> Watch the Netflix, sit the piss. So <laughs> figure it out. Ed, what do you mean? What do you mean? So, it involves? getting pissed on that's what was quite like she was being but, but like the idea of it happening so often is really funny <laughs> it's like yeah i think generally speaking you would get in the bath for that kind of activity. no no no. this would happen in, in the bed she had a waterproof not. sheet and everything that is not 
But also, if you're like in a share house, if you're sharing a bathroom and you know that your housemate's having sex in the bathroom, pissing everywhere, you'd be quite annoyed. It's like my housemate's douche used to always be in the shower. <laughs> One time I'd woken up at like 4 30. I've always had stupid hours for work. I woke up at 4.30 to go to my waitress shift. It was like 4.30, I was in the shower and the douche was just right there. And I was like, no, no more. <laughs> That's a bit much. Friend of mine um, lived with um, several lesbians, and she every evening they insisted they got one of them got a new girlfriend. Every evening they insisted on getting like quite sloppily red wine drunk, and then going into the bathroom and like vigorously having sex with each other in the bar. <laughs> <laughs> and she she would be like at eleven p.m. like knocking the door, being like, "I just want to brush my teeth." <laughs> like, like, please can I? Please can you finish up? She left the toothbrush in her student bathroom. No, these these were young professionals. These weren't students. <laughs> young professionals. Yeah. <laughs> Getting sloppy drunk, coming up from a hard day at work. Yeah, why well, it was lockdown. You just went on my oh, if it's lockdown, yeah. anything goes. Oh, you come off Zoom, get red wine drunk, four hours of bad <laughs> sex. <laughs> Come uh, on. <laughs> Some people made sourdough. <laughs> Some people went down on their girlfriend for 10 hours. Ed lived with four lesbians and he kept knocking at the door like, guys, can I? Can I? I just want to brush my teeth. I just want yeah. to brush my teeth. Yeah. Uh, it's quite antisocial though, isn't it? Yeah. Shared bathroom. I think, I think. I, your housemates can hear is just the, the light. I think you should. If you share a bathroom, you should have sex in it. It's my opinion. Like. Only if everyone's out. Yeah. I mean, obviously, the respectful thing is just to not have sex in full stop, but like everyone's human. But why? <laughs> everyone's human. Why do they need to have sex in the bathroom? Some people like having sex in the shower. Some people like being pissed on. D- uh, that none of that explains the bathroom. Look, I, I'm not here to defend them. I think it was rude. But I don't. I, well, I just don't un- understand why it needs to be there. If it's literally just like them and then one other housemate, they could have got <laughs> the kitchen. <laughs> they could have. They could have. Sorry, I'm just trying. Why to... not their mate's bedroom? <laughs> you're trying, yeah, you're, oh, trying yeah, to, well. you're trying to chop an onion or something like that, and just beside you, two people just going at it. Mm. Asylum seekers. Yeah, let's. It's good segue. Then Ava. Uh, that I tell you what, if we maintain this this work rate, because that little segment we've just done is encapsulated by one word <laughs> on our document, which is pleasantry. <laughs> There's probably about another 500 words here. <laughs> we could be here for a long time. <laughs> um, what's happening with, with, with asylum, uh, Ava? This, it's James Cleverley's doing the morning round. Uh, the government wants to talk about immigration today, don't they? Mm-hmm. So um, Rishi Sunak and James Cleverley have cleared the asylum backlog, and it's very exciting until you realise that they haven't cleared <laughs> the asylum backlog. Uh, Why? What does that mean? Well, so they've... Um, They've sped up the process, so they think that he's given away about 50,000 places, 50,000 places that should have gone away in the first place, but he's just sort of rushed them through. Um, There's 4,500 that still have a little question over them, and then the other remaining... You can't really have cleared the backlog, can you, if there's 4,500? Well, yeah, and then the other bit of that is um, people who were moved into hotels now being turfed out of those hotels. So it's, it's basically a total mess... But on the social posts that they were able to post on Twitter and Instagram, it looked really good until they got community noted. Yeah. What was, what was the community note? I actually wrote one of the community notes today. I was you like, wrote one of them? I actually did. I've been up a really long time, guys. Sorry. <laughs> I've been, there was like a 40-minute cab ride where I had nothing to do, and I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> Time to fact check. <laughs> what was Sunak's tweet and what was the note? We've cleared the backlog. And your note? No, they haven't. <laughs> I mean, it's good. <laughs> yeah, it is good. It, to the point. <laughs> it is very funny. Just being like, "Oh, we fixed it." Hope nobody mentions that we haven't. Yeah. I hope nobody checks this at all. I've, Why aren't you I've listening to me? It. I've really enjoyed um, Elon getting community noted like over over the Christmas period. It's been one of the standouts of, of Twitter, I think, for me. Yeah. Him getting community noted and then complaining. I actually didn't see that. Yeah, I can't remember what it was about, but. Okay, he tweets so much nonsense, but there. She does an internal comms thing, rather. <laughs> <laughs> That's a Slack message. Rather than like... But yeah, he was complaining about it, which I found amusing. That's yeah. good. Um, it's also just a very. It, it, it's also very sad because there are about ninety-two thousand people who were quote unquote legacy asylum claims, which basically means they've been in limbo for the past few years and they've just been stuck on not not allowed to work, not allowed to contribute to society or be human. Um, and they've had their process rushed. And a lot of them as well, like if you if you move from that in, that interim period 
um, when you're an asylum seeker to becoming a refugee, you get moved off of the, I think it's about 30 pounds a week and um, a place to live. You get turfed out of that. So you now have to find somewhere to live or apply for housing benefit and then apply for, um, well, ref well what, what was it? Job Seekers Allowance? So there'll be a lot of people who've got probably a good two to three weeks at minimum, like just gap here now where God knows where they'll go. Mm -hmm. It's pretty, it's pretty, um, pretty evil behavior, but at least they got to put up their nice graphic. Mm. Ed, why does um, Rishi Sunak want to talk about immigration so much? He wants to talk about immigration because he wants to draw, make it the dividing line with Labour, as in we've done it, we're going to solve it, and Labour aren't being strong enough and tough enough. But I do wonder, Labour aren't being radically different enough about immigration, are they? It seems like they should be... They, they, they want to turn the next election into the immigration election, and they want to make Rishi Sunak the guy who's going to sort it out. They're trying to make it, him the presidential... Trying to make it a presidential style election of a personality between Rishi Sunak and Keir Starmer. The key problem with that is no one can fucking stand Rishi Sunak. <laughs> so if you're putting all your hopes on someone who's still got negative popularity, only slightly, only slightly more popular than how toxic your party is, mm. what well, you've fucked it. You've completely fucked it. And, you, and you're, putting it, you're putting it on an issue you're also not doing well at. Mm. So every angle of this is bad. If you look at. Um sort of polling uh, most prominent political um, issue or like priority, what's your key political priority going into an election or right now? Every single uh, demographic breakdown you can think of, whether that's um, age, sex, geographic location, earning capacity, every single demographic in the country, the number one concern is either econo the economy or inflation, apart from one demographic for which it is immigration. Can you guess which demographic it is? Young black women. How did you know? <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's the over 65s. Um, so I kind of, I guess it makes sense from a, everyone's really concerned about this thing that we're failing them on. So let's try and make them think about something else. I guess I can follow that. There was a really interesting, um, you know, that, uh, every, or whatever it is, 20, 20 and 30 years, depending on how serious the documents are, there's the National Archive declassified mm -hmm. documents at the, at the end of every year. And um, there's some really good stuff, lots of really good stuff about the new Labour. Um, but most particularly one of the great ones over the festive period was the declassification of Tony Blair's, what mm -hmm. it was called, um, the nu asylum, the nuclear option. He basically oh asked, God. yeah, he basically asked. He's going to use them for energy. <laughs> Genius. <laughs> <laughs> um, he, he asked for more radical solutions to, uh, to, to deal with the asylum problem as he saw it in Britain. So what did they come back with? They came back with um, the offshore processing. They came back with return to safe countries. They came back with legislating to break the European Court of Human Rights, uh, even though that in two to three years' time they'd get found out in the court. It would secure them good headlines. And the, the crazy thing about it was, this was 20 years ago. This is prime new Labour. And 20 years later, we're still talking about the same ideas. Admittedly, they were, they were too radical and unworkable, so new Labour didn't adopt them. Um, but to me, it was very striking that 20 years later, it's still... They're the, they're the same ideas. And admittedly, the Conservative Party is actually implementing them, so you can make the argument that our Overton window has actually shifted quite dramatically to the right because what was previously viewed as unworkable and unethical is now the policy of government. But also, I thought it just belied, belies a sort of um, a complete lack of political imagination. Mm -hmm. The fact that no one's capable of conceiving of another way of dealing with this, that the ideas are the same 20 years, 20 years later. I'm not sure I agree with that because I think that these sort of ideas kind of do bandy about civil servants for for years and years and actually the nuclear option that it was meant to be with Blair is what Dominic Cummings said the Rwanda plan was meant to be under Boris Johnson a distraction was, no no it was never meant to be used it was mm. meant to be like this this imagined thing that you'd basically put to the voters but you'd never actually do it and so it was a shock when they did mm. well, also deeply unsexy they were going to go to the Isle of Mull see that was that a telegraph thing but like Blair was going to send it's the same thing. To migrants to Mull. It's mm. not the same thing. Mull's in Britain. <laughs> Mull is an island, yes. Or is it, is it, is it, Mull's part of Scotland, Scotland's part of Scotland. Were you there, were you there, um, over the festival? Not this period. year. For what, Mull? Mull. No, no, no I do, I, I, I have do gone, you? I've gone to Mull a couple of times for New Year. It's beautiful, it's amazing. And it's, lot, it's not Rwanda. It is actually so. very beautiful. I did look at the photos when, um, something has bitten me while we've been sitting here. What? What the hell was that? That's a Surely, studio bed, probably. 
Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, no, it is really beautiful. It is beautiful. Face, but um, what was funny was that the XL bullies are either oh, facing yeah, yeah. death or going to Scotland. And it's just I amazing. I've worse than death. <laughs> Blair. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But Blair's idea was the same as Rishi Sunak's idea for the for the bullies. He thought it was actually even more cruel than Rwanda. It's like they go to Mull, yeah, they get a ferry. From yeah, it was. They were looking at detention centres within the UK for processing. Um, Mull being one of them. I wonder if well, I don't think Mull would have the infrastructure for it. Basically, they, I, I they don't think Rwanda one does either. And neither did Ascension Island. But I think that they. Uh... Blair also considered the Falklands. Nice. Um, they're, no, they didn't do it for NIMBY concerns. Yeah, they thought the great. local population would be unhappy with it. Uh, yeah, same as like in Weymouth, isn't it? Or Portland, or wherever they're... Yeah. Portland are quite chill with it. It's Weymouth that are really annoyed about it. Really? Yeah. Portland are, very, Portland are just sad about it. Offer a lot of support. Weymouth, very much. NIMBY. No, Weymouth has kind of got more of the sort of like Kent home counties feel to it that you know that it's quite... Um, well, this is England or England, whereas Portland's got this sort of like quite, I guess, Bristol or Brighton feel mm. to it, where they're or a bit Portland, Oregon. huh? Or Portland, Oregon. Mm. Yeah, sure. Interesting comparison there. Um, no, should we do our predictions at the end? I was going to use that to, to go off into who will win the American election, but maybe we do that. Maybe we do our super forecasting at, at the end. Yeah. Mm. Should we do that? We've been yeah. studying the numbers. We have running our models. Oh yeah, big deep in the numbers. Um. Okay, let's no, let's stick with this for a moment. Um, Ava, Ni- Nigel Farage is floating around this issue. Um, what's he got to say for himself? So he said that the government had rushed through the processing um, and he'd given away 50,000 uh, asylum places, which is true. That, that is true. They, they to, In order to clear the backlog, they actually processed the people that they had been essentially keeping captive, actually, because... People have been in this kind of like Schrodinger's asylum claim mm. for like the past couple of years. I mean, they need to be processed, don't they? I mean, yeah. these yeah. people need to make their minds up. Either it's there's a huge backlog, what's happening, or it's, you deal with it, and then it's like, oh, <laughs> we didn't. Oh, they didn't, I wouldn't want them to stay. <laughs> <laughs> these are all what? fakes. These are all military-aged men, and they should be sent back. <laughs> That's always the maddest phrase to be military-aged men. It's there's, just insane. There's an Easter egg for a video that will be uploaded probably before this. Actually, you might even watch it before the podcast. An Easter egg. An Easter egg where I have a discussion with the man about the phrase military age man. Hey, hey, Ava, Ava. Viking invasion, yeah? Yeah. Norman conquest, yeah? Mm-hmm. What were they? Uh, they were invasions! <laughs> invasions, <laughs> invasions. By yeah. military age men! <laughs> right, 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 right. What's happening right now, yeah? Yeah? Mm. Military age men, what's that? But, invasion. You know, invasion. You know what's funny is looking at you both and thinking, God, you are military aged men. <laughs> That's what Ed says to him. That's why I say it again. <laughs> you... Ed's like, I'm a military aged man. <laughs> it's just, like, it just means young man. We are so going to lose the Falklands. Like, it... Oh, it's over. <laughs> it's over. <laughs> Me and all these, like, dad's so army. over. Tin hats. Bro, we'd be in the fucking propaganda division and you know it. I think we'd be quite good at it. No, I, I've already said I'm going to man the phones. Um, the phone, the phone, back, the phone <laughs> lights. What? You're in conscription. I'll do, like, the PR for it. I think that's what we would be best situated. I'll be like lovely rather weather, than down. combat. No, we're psyops for sure. We're big. We're doing. We're doing an op. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Information warfare. Absolutely. I think I'd be a really good at a very good gaslighting propaganda cam- campaign. Mm. If I wanted to, you know. Try it. Like sometimes I look at during the last election, I would look at what the Conservatives did, and I'd be like, "See that?" But I would have done it like this, and I think that's a, that's a dangerous. Dangerous game we're getting into here. You mm. know? It's good that you recognise within that within yourself, and you can like temper that. It's important. Sure. Um, I was going to say something really bad then, and I won't. Um, so, so basically, what Rishi Sunak's done with this fifty thousand mm. granting their applications is he has banked on. It, even after doing that, he's still under the number that there was the year before. So, what the big line is going to be is asylum seeker numbers down even though it's not down particularly a lot. Mm. Um, and he would have had to grant all of them status anyway. So it's all just, it's all very smoke and mirrors. And what's the significance of Nigel Farage floating around at this moment in time? Well, tomorrow there's the big reform party conference. So um, we're expecting, but we don't know, we're expecting Nigel Farage will uh, come back and talk about the conference. conference. 
It's not party conference. It's, it's like a, a big speech that they can right, right, right. for New Year. New Year, new Nigel. I don't. <laughs> I don't think that. I don't know where all of this stuff about him joining the Conservative Party came from. I think that was just a just a, probably him. Either a bad no, him, I think him it's either a bad reading conference. of politics or it was like um, yeah, either it might have been him trying to stir it up a little bit mm. or uh, but no, I think that I think that they are genuinely very excited to have a lot of control now at the next election. Because if they are going to run in every single seat, mm. they are going to split that vote like you've never even known. Mm. And they're going to dramatically reduce what the Conservatives gain. You know um, that John Curtis guy? Yeah. Yeah. The cesphologist. For Sir John Curtis. Sorry. Sorry. Put some respect sorry, on sorry. his name. Sorry, put some respect on his name. Um, the BBC's polling, polling guy. Mm -hmm. He said for every one voter that the Tories are now losing to the Labour Party, they're also losing one to reform. Jesus Christ. So I think you go, if you look at it and think about how uh, realistically no one knows who reform are, mm -hmm. right? People that do politics it, by election and that's it, don't know who reform are. But if Nigel comes back, no, no. they'll know. And that changes things. Uh, yeah, well, it does. But also just because you know, this is what we was talked about with that Nigel being a campaigner. He loves this. He mm. loves that he can... Was big issues. So much more control if he doesn't stand in a constituency and he just goes about talking about how terrible the Conservatives have been on crime and immigration and finances and taxes and just, you know, stunts the vote. He would rather see a Liberal Democrat, like, I do, gain. <laughs> yeah, I, do wonder, I do wonder what the, um, what the play for these guys is because I'm looking at this thinking, all, all this does, this just... This just kills the Tory party right it just loses Tory seats realistically reform are not going to uh, they're not I'd be I'd be fuck oh yeah I mean <laughs> yeah I'd be surprised if they want if they want if they want a seat right no, this, sure. this, this is going to be cut to like <laughs> <laughs> Nigel Farage Richard or, Tice outside Downing <laughs> Street <laughs> yeah. King invites Tice <laughs> what would the coalition be coalition with Greens. the DUP <laughs> imagine a reformed DUP coalition no but baby but do I this, this goes back to what we were talking about before Christmas about pushing for proportional representation, mm. which is something a lot of the minor parties want, right? <coughs> so if they can win 12% of the votes at the next election, that is a really good case to then campaign to change the entire voting system. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Shout out to the Times who wrote that up, that little piece we did up as unverified report. Unsubstantiated, and I think it was. Unsubstantiated. Yeah. God, they're such snobs, aren't they? Yeah. It's, it really has stuck in my mind because they don't do that to anyone else. You've got a chip no. on your shoulder about it. I have got a chip on my shoulder mm. about it. It was the most substantiated claim that I've made on here. Do you know how much shit I talk on here? <laughs> that was actually... <laughs> Did you hear the fish finger bit? Yeah. It was nonsense. <laughs> that, was, <laughs> that was unsubstantiated. Yeah. It's also you did the exact same thing that all the Times <coughs> political journalists and lobby reporters do and just like speak to sources and don't name them. That's a, that's a really good point. Is that's it, that's exactly a really really good point, but because because you're a um, because you're a correspondent for um, one of the national print media, you get to, you get to pick up the tidbits from the lobby bar and the stuff that people feed you, and you write it up and say a well placed Tory source says, and it goes on the front page, and everyone goes, oh, what a fantastic bit of journalism. You do the same thing, and it goes fucking, and it's like, well, God, where's the, where's the proof of that? You know. Mm -hmm. Well, anyway, so three weeks after we did that interview with Richard Tice, where he was talking about running in every seat in the country. The Times put it on their front page, like a story about it, and it was like, "Oh, sorry, oh, were well, you were you writing you up anything. unsubstantiated claims <laughs> that were made on Joe?" <laughs> so embarrassing. We're reporting you to the regulator. Lobby journalist. What I'm telling mummy. Today? I'm telling mummy. You're telling mummy. Maybe you tell daddy. <laughs> yes. Who's daddy? Perhaps. Rupert Murdoch. Is he daddy? He's gone now, isn't he? Step down. Still alive. Thankfully. Thankfully. Looking for a job. What should we do next? Epstein? Mm. Th that list's not out yet, is it? No. Ava's... That um, time of recording, anyway. Ava's vetoed my best idea ever. <laughs> Which was? Once the, once the list is out, we do like an Instagram carousel of people not on the list that you really think should have been. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> they really fit the vibe <laughs> of... Having sex with a teenager, Ava. <laughs> Ava, I would like to endorse your decision. 
<laughs> you were so serious. Yeah, look, it's funny, but I mean, for obvious legal reasons, not published. I think it was inspired by, do you remember the, on, the Onions Russell Brand thing? Yeah. Where it was like, nation, yeah. sh- nation shocked that Russell Brand not already in prison. They took something. this long, yeah. I think that's, I think th- there's gold there. There's a, there's a good interview, you know, on the Paul Joe YouTube channel between me and John Sweeney on this very subject matter. Really? Glenn Maxwell, yeah. Oh, of course. Yes, there is. I was present for it. <laughs> you, really? you, you filmed the fucking yeah. thing. There's uh, yeah, something no, good on there. <laughs> <laughs> that I didn't make? Yeah. Shocking. <laughs> no, but you said, you said Sweeney. I didn't, think, yeah, yeah. I didn't make the association with... We were there. We it, stayed. We were there afterwards. We drank wine with them. We did. Yeah. Just, uh, over a year ago. Just over a year ago. Was it not? Yeah, it was in his house. Mm. Charming. Mm. You mean Kezia? Yeah. Yeah. Good team. Good piece. Very good piece. He knows he knows what he's talking about when it comes to that. Yeah. Wrote the book? Wrote the podcast? Both. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Have we got any more Epstein? Glad stuff? we covered that. I don't know, it's tough it's tough to talk about without seeing the names. <sighs> well they're guess? not gonna be out till tomorrow. No, Ed. <laughs> we won't guess. I've been uh tonight is the last night. It's up till midnight that you uh, can Imagine. put your claim into the court and then not have your name published. I thought it was it not yesterday. Huh? Was it not yesterday? Midnight what is, yesterday? What day is it today? It's Tuesday today. Yeah, so it was last night and then today is Tuesday. So <laughs> last night, <laughs> up until midnight last night and then she, so my claim was not um, Whoa. Up, upheld then. I guess I'm going to be published right in that. <laughs> think, think about the, like the millionaires in their New York apartments, New York apartments looking at the balcony and just thinking about jumping. Oh my God, Ed. <laughs> just, just, think, no, just thinking like, oh, this could be. Have you seen the fake lists? The fake lists are so funny. I saw one that claimed that both Mikel Arteta <laughs> and Callum Hudson Adoy <laughs> were on Epstein's <laughs> which is categorically <laughs> true. But the idea of it is so funny. I think if I had been one of these men who had been on the plane and my name was going to get published, I would just come out and own it. I'd own the fuck out of it. It was I'd unbelievable. Like, oh yeah, I'd be like, oh so what if I'm a nonce? <laughs> so what, what of it? What is it? Illegal? Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, oh. it, yes, it is. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> this is backfired. It was over international water. <laughs> Where are you going to put me? There Prison? No- <laughs> yes. <laughs> there are no crimes in the sky. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what a massage in the sky from a child. It was just the feet. <laughs> oh, absolutely. There's no, there's nothing illegal about a massage. I finished before the child moved past my feet. <laughs> Everything. Changed. In what state does that count? <laughs> We're playing fast and loose with the love podcast hate nonsense. Mm. I of this. Yeah, well, I think the understanding would be that we do love podcasts and we hate nonsense. True. Even if it's on planes, especially if it's on planes. Yeah, especially if it was in international water. <laughs> <laughs> Apart from on the Bermuda Triangle. No, because they disappear afterwards. Yeah. There's no evidence. Are you still on North Sea TikTok? No, I came off of that. I don't know how. My algorithm's got moved past it. It was good, though. It was good, wasn't it? it? I think it was like just before Christmas, wasn't it? That was when peak North Sea TikTok. Were you on it at all? No. Oh. It was just like, oh, like really rough seas. And to that, you know, that, that TikTok sounds like, yeah. Oh. yeah, like that. What do you think that song's for? Where does well, it come it's from? Obviously men of the North Sea. Just Men of the North Sea singing, mm. singing hippo. You know, I just, I find it fascinating that we are the same age and we live like diametrically opposed lives. Like I go home and sit on North Sea TikTok and like you go home and like plant vegetables. <laughs> And like, <laughs> do something valuable with your time. Like often I come in and I say, guys, have you seen this? And you're like, no, Ava, I was having sex. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, <laughs> oh okay. <laughs> well, I was in the pub till 11 and then <laughs> sat on TikTok for four hours. I haven't slept. <laughs> no wonder I can't sleep. <laughs> Wired. Yeah. I've, um. The idea of someone at home on Raya, just like knowing everyone. <laughs> oh my god, that it's reminds me. Someone came up to me, to me at a party I went to with your friend before Christmas and said, 
they direct messaged me on Raya and I hadn't replied. And I was like, that's so embarrassing. Bringing Why that, up, say bringing that, that up in person is actually one of the most embarrassing things you could ever do. It was excruciating. Hey, you're ignoring my DMs. What about? You know you have to pay to do that. No! <laughs> How does Raya work? Uh, when a, when a mummy pay. and a daddy you love each other very much. It's a subscription service, isn't it? Yeah, it. it's £17 pounds a month. God, yeah. To get ignored by celebrities. <laughs> get, to get ignored by Ava. Ignored? Sorry, I meant for like the average person. The average person? Well, well I'm, I'm like the least valuable person on there. And yet she still ignores them. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Who's the most famous person you've seen on it? I'll tell you afterwards who I did match with and then they sent me one message and I panicked so much that I cried. <laughs> <laughs> so embarrassed. And that person was on Epstein's list as well? No, he's it, No, it was, it was Jeffrey Epstein. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't like it. I get really stressed about that. Do you remember that when at the time that when England, the England cricketers were all playing and mm-hmm. they kept getting in trouble for stuff and then one of them had DM'd me on Instagram at two in the morning and I cried. <laughs> I was like, I don't want to be involved in this. <laughs> You're t- you've never used a dating app, which is nope. an interesting thing. Never. Because my relationship predates them. Yeah, which is quite interesting. Yeah. Was, I think it's quite a formative thing for people of our generation. How about you? Have you? Yeah, that's a my girlfriend. Which one? Which app? Not which girlfriend, which app? <laughs> <laughs> so my, my other girl, uh, Hinge. Which I think is the most normal one. What's the least normal? Plenty of fish, probably. Yeah, they would be insane. That's for older people, isn't it? I don't know. Wasn't someone on that? Why did we talk plenty about of plenty fish. of fish the other day? Plenty of remember. fish feels like for evil seas. Christmas, we were talking about it. Actually, no. Oh. I can't remember why. Yeah, I think it's plenty of fish or like OK Cupid would be like a weird. What's Tinder got to say for itself? I didn't like Tinder very much. What was it just like bot filled? Bot filled. I haven't like... been on Tinder. Never. No, someone's doing good traffic. They're pre- like. With your photos. <laughs> on Hinge, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, my. My cousin matched with Ava oh, on no. Hinge. And I was mentioned to you, and you're like, I don't have Hinge. <laughs> he, but they knew he quite proactively was like quite serious about reporting it. Yeah. He was like, well, this is a complete violation of privacy then. <laughs> <laughs> no, after that, I changed, like, I did have an old profile, and I changed it to different pictures, mm-hmm. then it would be clear that that one wasn't mine. Yeah, no instantly. I'm really concerned that that one's messaging people. If I've messaged you on Hinge, it's not me. <laughs> it is not me. <laughs> so, someone thinks they're in, like, a, a long-term digital relationship with you. Like, <laughs> someone's, like, been catfished. Yeah. And they're like, they're like, oh, everything's so well on TV. Like, watching everything you're on. They think you're her, you're their girlfriend. That would be so crap. Imagine if you're being catfished by me. <laughs> like that is so <laughs> shit. Being fleeced for everything. That is uh. That, I mean, at least be catfished by like you know I don't know. Cats later. Why cats later? I don't know because then it's actually got like some value to it, hasn't it? I have to stop doing this. I keep. I've been going around all Christmas calling myself a low value woman. I've got to stop doing. That. <laughs> Oh my God. Believe in yourself. <laughs> no, I do, but I just <laughs> I've just been saying it as a joke. Okay. Yeah, you need to get out of the head. You need to do some positive affirmations. No, I don't. Okay. Do you have a mantra? Um, young money. <laughs> <laughs> young no. money. Yeah, he what chants that? it five times every morning. Was that, what was that? Was that like Drake's Drake, Lil Wayne, Nicki Minaj? All that no, that was um, your money, cash money. That's it, yeah. That's my that's my uh, mantra. I've got a tattoo to my back. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's my positive affirmation. I look in the mirror and just scream, "Young money, cash money." I love the idea of you sitting at home listening to like bedrock. <laughs> <laughs> that's a throwback. What, what a tune. tune that was! That's so good. Ed go, I can make your bed right good. You like going on your little Listen to like, nano like a- on. R&B from 2012. Is that the first? You'll be. Uh, is that not? That's the first track with Nicki Minaj on, isn't it? I don't no. know. I didn't even know she was on that track. Uh, no, that she is on that track. Yeah. I think that might be her first, the first song on which she appears. I believe. Can I make? Can I make a guess? Go on. And then I'm going to get this completely wrong. I think Monster came out before that. Mm. My guess would be Starships. No, Starships wasn't even on Pink Friday. I don't know enough about Nicki Minaj. Get off the table. Yeah, sorry, I'm (laughs) putting it. Sorry, I'm not on 
Menagio. I reckon it was, my guess would be Monster, um, Super Bass, and then that. Mm. Well, what have you looked up? Dirty Money Records CEO Fendi reportedly first heard Menage's music on the social network site MySpace and signed her to his label. He's credited with introducing her to Lil Wayne and Young Money. Well, then maybe it is that then first. List of songs recorded by Nicki Minaj, that feels like it might be it. Ah, uh, okay. No, five star. Don't know it. Do you know Lil what? Wayne featuring I was Nicki wrong. Minaj. I was wrong. Bedrock came out in 2009, December. Is it as old as that? Huh? I didn't know that it was as old as that. Yeah. This isn't a great listen, is it? No. No. Um, for me personally, that was so boring. <laughs> Ed. Yeah. Bring us up to date with the XL bully story. The XL bully story. Uh, well, they can either be killed or sent to Scotland. Um, no, the ban comes into... It's in force now, isn't it? Yeah, as it was yesterday. It was the first day of the ban. Um, 31st of January, they've got until. I thought it was... To, uh... Something happened on the 31st of December. Because they were talking, they were talking about it on LBC before I went on. I could swear, not... I could swear something came into effect. Yeah, I think it, it was added to the list. I right. think. Yeah, um, and then they've got until the thirty first of January to um, to get their exemption certificate. There's a, is it a really good series of um, like TikToks or viral clips of people running essentially an underground railroad of XL bullies to Scotland. Sorry, well, like a Kinder Transport. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> it's like uh, it's like Nicholas Winton is. <laughs> Sorry, it's gonna be muzzled. <laughs> they do have to be muzzled now. They do. They can. They, they're exempt. They'd have to be cold yet. See, see, in sixty years, there's going to be Anthony a, Hopkins. A this is your life style program of a man sitting in a TV studio <laughs> surrounded by ex <laughs> and their presenter is going to go. Well, Vincent. <laughs> These are the EXO bullies you saved. <laughs> and the EXO bullies are going to give them a standing ovation. Did you see my guy on Twitter wearing a muzzle yeah. in solidarity with his XL bully? Mm. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Which I have handily bookmarked to use um, <laughs> as a reaction gif whenever Dua Lipa posts a photo. <laughs> 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 I got both of you there. My, my, <laughs> my favourite one of those is some guy tweets whenever it might be Julie, but I know Sydney Sweeney. New photo of Sydney Sweeney. <laughs> he, goes, he tweets, landlords round again checking a door of a door. <laughs> <laughs> there was that big trend, wasn't there, over Christmas that worked well, <coughs> in November that was like, ask your boyfriend to name a woman. Because the first girl who did it was like, name a woman. And he was like, Sydney Sweeney. <laughs> <laughs> she was like, what the fuck? <laughs> so Just furious. It became like a trend to like, unless he says your name, then you've got to dump them. That's a really high. Nice. The bar is very high for men at the moment. Yeah. You know? <laughs> You're not allowed to know We're really another struggling. woman exists. Yeah, you can't assault anymore. We're like, really struggling. Yeah. The other good uh, stuff. reaction gift for that one is, you know, that Australian guy doing the impression man. of the dog. <laughs> yeah, man dog fuck. Yeah. Maybe an XL bully. You did an impression now of an XL bully. That oh. toddler looks fucking delicious. No, it's more like, oh. what did you say? That toddler looks fucking delicious. Oh, right. Um, There's some really good AI art of like crying XL bullies at the moment. Yeah. There's a lot of, I get sent a lot of XL bully stuff. I wonder why. Yeah. <laughs> it's good stuff. It's almost, it's almost <laughs> done millions of views. <laughs> Interviewing yeah, but the people that own them. But I've done the one was I feel like a one hit wonder. They don't do You wanna go back to it? There's no there's no I, I think you're probably persona non grata at, <laughs> at, those, at, those, at, those, at those marches now, to be quite honest with you. No, but like they don't make it they don't make me there's no Richard Drax memes that they send me. I've got I've done I've got other I've got my B sides are good too. Do you remember I got a Richard Drax meme? Someone sent me like an email being like, um 
dick pics well, that included. Really yeah, that was very that funny. That was really funny. That was really good. You look like an XL bully. What the fuck does that mean? That's high praise. <laughs> Yoked. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely You do jacked. all that protein you've been eating. I'm just like small and broad. Yeah, well, no, but broad, yeah. Don't you dare call me broad back. And you've killed at least three toddlers. <laughs> and they're delicious. <laughs> you know what? as a physical specimen are nuts. Do you... How, see, when you guys see them in real life, in reality, yeah. which is actually like quite common. Quite frequently, yeah. I always cross the road in case that's the one that's going to... I don't want to be in the news. Yeah, I was really embarrassing at a park over the, just before the weekend. I was cycling to my friends in Peckham. <laughs> It was chasing you. No, as I was going through, there were two not on the lead. And my line bike was out of power. <laughs> and I, so I was already stressed. Nightmare like, fuel, that, isn't it? It goes Perfect really storm. slowly when they don't have any power in them. Mm. And I was like, oh, my God. Oh, my. This is it. <laughs> this Hitting is it. <laughs> Snapping at your heels. Yeah. I was, I was terrified. Yeah, I always feel... I know, obviously, the people that get mauled and savaged by these dogs. It's not their fault. Like they don't deserve it. But I do. When I watch the videos, I do think, "Oh, you fucking suck. You're, <laughs> pathetic. You're pathetic." Really? What? Yeah, I know. It's completely irrational. It's completely irrational. It's completely irrational. And obviously, if I was attacked by an exile bully, I don't think I'd be able to defend myself. But I, do, I don't know. Sixty kilo. I just, you know, like your muscle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and it, teeth. He'll be like cartwheeling like a three-year-old through the sky, and I'll be like, <laughs> fist up, chin down, buddy. <laughs> Take care if of yourself. Protect yourself at all times. <laughs> Everyone knows the rules. Constant vigilance. Do you know what that reminds me of? When I was working somewhere once, there was a conversation about whether, I'm trying to be as loose as I can, a reporter was going to be sent down to be attacked in full <laughs> protection by a police dog because the consensus was, could you survive a police, yeah. well, the question was, could you survive a police dog attack or could, is a police dog more powerful than a, than a man? Mm. Anyway, they couldn't get the insurance for it in the end. But there was a That's good- so funny. Four hours where I was ringing, ringing around different, like, dog handlers and being like, what do I need to get this reporter? Like, what equipment? Did you, you know there's a flat 2% of men, when surveyed, asked if they could successfully fight? Beat a lion. Yeah. There, there's 2% of men who answer, yes, I could defeat it in a fight to any animal. That's sick. Bears, elephants, lions. Komodo dragons. Do you think they just More fool them if they think they can fire for Komodo. Do you think dragons? they just don't know about enough animals? I, I <laughs> like you I know think, about Komodo dragon. I you think, know full well you're not. I think the arrogance of some men knows no bounds. <laughs> what's your What's your limit? What do you think is your top? Your top? Start low, move higher, and I'll tell you where where it is. Well, I don't know a lot of animals. I don't Hamster. Know. Yes. Cat. Yes. Dog. That's not like so brilliant. No, no, no. Because dog is too broad. Okay. Um, like a uh, Scotty dog. <coughs> yes. A spaniel, yes. A golden retriever. Getting interesting. That's an interesting one, isn't it? Because big. Is it? Is it for for the purposes of the conversation? It does the other animal know it's a fight to the death? It's in attack mode. Yeah. Was well, so you're in a dog? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're not sneaking up on it. No, no. It's like you're in seconds out. Let's fight. Yeah. yeah. And that dog is trying to kill me. Yes. I would beat it, but I would be probably quite seriously injured. Alsatian. Touch and go, 50-50. No way. Our station killed you. Our stations are so big. You haven't seen me fucking fight a dog. <laughs> <laughs> but think of oh shit that like you're equipped like, Yeah, no, bro, you're, you're fucked. Short, you've got short nails. You're fucked you've up. no sharp teeth. You're fucked up. Obviously, you don't bite it, Ed. <laughs> That's not how you would what fight are you it. doing? You're like, what, like, what, do... what would I do? How would I fight a dog like that? <laughs> <laughs> like, you don't have any equipment. Yeah, so I think your best bet probably is to, like, take a horrific mauling to the arm. Like it's going to jump at you, right? Yeah. So you put your arm up. Yeah. It bites your arm. Mm. You sacrifice an arm, get on its back, and fucking choke the living shit <laughs> out of it. A snake. What kind? Python. No. Anaconda. No. And obviously not. Hmm. Well, the anaconda's um, bigger. What about a crocodile? No. Nope. No way. A goat. A goat would be an interesting one. Goat would be real interesting. <laughs> <laughs> I think people would pay good money no, to no, watch no. me fight a goat. <laughs> like, 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 people would be. Yeah. Like, <laughs> they would. Yeah. They would. See, see the, the type of man who says Tell he us can fight any Reddit. animal. How much? <laughs> how much for Ollie to fight a goat? Look, this is how they would if do we it. think it's financially viable, we will organise it. <laughs> milk a goat, goat fighting. How much for Ollie to milk a goat? That's so different to fighting it. Huh? So, Ollie, picture this. 
Ollie standing like a matador at this goat full like is he o- dressed in the, the yeah he's like he's enjoying the show Ollie doesn't realise the, the hubris of this idea <laughs> Ollie thinks there's a long and lucrative career he doesn't he doesn't realise he's about to be gored to death <laughs> well, oh, he's, he's like rent, he's rented the tails absolutely yeah. the goat is fucking <coughs> angry it's go- you're in his field mm. it is, it is what's, like, what's the equivalent of red rag to a bull I don't know yellow to a goat it's like <laughs> it's like a yellow rag to oh a goat. yes of course so what you think you can do you've got that you flank from upstairs you you're going to try and you're going to grab its horns and fuck it like that right okay that's your because because <laughs> that's what i think I'm doing. if you're arrogant enough you to be in that situation yeah. yeah 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 all right you carry on and then you think that's what you're trying to do and then everyone watches you just fucking like yeah two right through your back really graphic you're dead everyone's watched it that's how that would go it'd be fascinating to watch though that's one i'm most interested in yeah i don't know you'd have to you'd have to try and fucking gouge its eyes out pretty quick wouldn't you you can get close enough yeah. i don't think that they i don't think eyes would work I think on it can, an animal it can kick quite hard as well yeah yeah i don't think that's a thing to them the way that it is to like people you know because there's vanity involved in the people. That's why they get so... No, I, I mean, as in if you successfully gu- gouge out both their eyes, it can't. It can no longer see you. Yeah, but you know what? <laughs> so... <laughs> but you need to be close. It can feel you. No, of, yeah, of course. What yeah. if it's got sonar? I don't, like... <laughs> it's <laughs> got <laughs> bleating. Wait, does... <laughs> Developing a mental picture of its surroundings. <laughs> <laughs> He's over there! <laughs> Beep. 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 <laughs> A bat? You can do a bat. <laughs> Here's a good one that I used to enjoy. So I want you to picture you're in a walk-in freezer. Uh-huh. Uh, fridge, because it's probably going to be in there for a while. You can't get out, though. Doors, you know, they usually have those big buttons on the inside of them that you push over. That's not there. You're, mm-hmm. you're shut in. You're inside on the floor of the walk-in fridge. You're hogtied. <laughs> okay. I'm what? Hogtied. What's that? Is it like that? Your wrists and ankles are tied together. And then there's something tied between those. So, like, you're kind of prostrate. You can't... Because, you know, if, if they weren't tied together, you could just stand up. Right. So you're, just, you're basically... You're tied up on the floor. It's like in Planet of the Apes. Yeah. You know, imagine if, if you had been kidnapped and they were going to transport you on, like, a long stick and you yeah. were sort of hung off it. Right. If they're, like, a zip line. <laughs> and okay. they can get you from, like, one skyscraper to the other. <laughs> That's right. And they okay. funnel you across like that. Right. Yeah. I'm with you now. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, thanks, for, thanks for that. Makes perfect sense. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> and on the opposite side of the fridge is a fully grown Atlantic blue lobster. Right. Well, I'm done. Who wins? Who wins? How big is an Atlantic blue lobster? I think you're talking sort of between one and two feet long. You could, you could stamp on it? For sure. No, no, because you're, you're hogtied. Oh, shit. And it's trying to kill you? Yeah. What do they have beyond, like, claws? That's it. I think you still win. You could you could physically roll onto it. Well, you wouldn't when you want to use it because the claws it would be like a, that would be quite helpful for. Under- Why is this in a fridge? Why does that make a difference? <laughs> that's <laughs> just the arena. Exactly, I'll tell you, I'll tell, I'll tell if that's you, to keep it fresh. I tell you why. <laughs> <laughs> So that whoever loses, whoever loses his corpse is kept fresh and it's still, it's still delicious. No, it's because um, I first came up with this talking with one of my mates at Mackey's and we were talking about if you were stuck in the walking fridge <laughs> right, <okay. It's> with <laughs> a lobster, <laughs> would you defeat it in combat? I think that's like n- real context needed for like, there's no other reason for you to be in a fridge. Uh, no, I think the arena is relevant because it's like, you know, would you rather fight? Would you, do you think you could beat a shark in a fight? If it's in the sea, that makes a big difference to, to whether or not you <laughs> win. <That's> the <laughs> yeah, the lobster's fine in the cold, but then, yeah. yeah. So, so I, I take your point lobster. about rolling over on top of it, yeah. but my concern is that you don't have enough height to crush it. It would be like... Be- or, also, no, 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 but even it like, exists at the bottom of the ocean, right? So it's, you, it, it handles pressure. Yeah, it's not pressure, it's, it's, it's mass. Mm. It's like, if even if I rolled a huge concrete slab onto you and you're lying flat and i've just like i've just pushed it onto you nothing no don't be fucking rid- you've not a strap what, do you think you're like a concrete slab have you seen no. it? he's been trying well, well, yeah sorry yeah a concrete been... slab sorry. through a lobster yeah like a something that's one no he said long. it was like tough tough two foot two foot, long. <laughs> two foot. <laughs> it's two foot long <laughs> so that still can't weigh more than like how a many... two foot lobster how many kilos is that 
<laughs> I don't know. Why <laughs> Why do we need metric now? What do you mean? I, like, what weight is that? Because like you can crush that, sure, like for sure. What you can't you you can't. If an elephant the rolls, if an you elephant know. rolls over onto you, you're dead. If an elephant. Yes. Are you calling me fat? No, I wasn't obviously doing that. <laughs> Heaviest lobster ever discovered, forty-five pounds. Forty-five pounds. So that's like. No, he needs kilos. that in kilos. So it's about twenty kilos. What, what? What in Scotland? You're not doing pounds and stone. I don't know stone. I'm a kilos. What? Kilos guy. Forever. That's ridiculous. No, it's not. It makes more sense. Right. Okay. Um, for the sake for the sake of argument, this is kind of what you're dealing with. I think that would kill me. That is quite intense. I didn't realize the size of the claws. <laughs> but I think you still. I still you still flatten it, and it's still like. Because it's not lethal in of itself. It's not like a scorpion. No, but if 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 your nose gets in between those claws. But you could, that it could so easily not. Are his claws taped? That's insane. During that. No, 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 no. He's un. He's unbound. You're bound. Okay. He's unbound. You could use him. He doesn't have the elastic bands on. Do you ever? Do you know the? Do you know the guy on TikTok? Italian batch. Italian back. Yes. He's so funny. He does this like, you versus you being held hostage. Like ah oh, no. Oh, you, you brutes! When I get out, <laughs> versus me being held hostage, it's like I untied myself thirty minutes ago. <laughs> jump, jump, jump! <laughs> that's me and the Italian, lo- not the Italian lobster, the Atlantic lobster. Because I think that's the way you do it. I think you get a, uh, you have to try and force the lobster to come for you, and get your binds in in his, in his claws, <laughs> and then he cuts you. He frees you. The joke's on him. You can rip them in half and use one of them as scissors. That's what, no, but that was my original thought, was you, yeah. you could talk it into, you could negotiate with it to, to cut the ties that you have. You could talk it into, we're both enemies of the people, man. <laughs> <laughs> They're locked in here together. <laughs> yeah. I'm not locked in here with you. You're locked in here with me. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know that video of... Lindsay Lohan when she's opening up her new club in Mykonos at oh you're gonna fucking why did you call the Mykonos With, the, besides the point okay she's opening a new club in Mykonos and they're serving seafood and she gets really upset that the lobster um the lobsters are obviously still alive you know because mm. they are alive before so she's like I'm gonna free you and she throws them into the sea no and this is like off camera moment where they're like oh they're freshwater lobsters <laughs> <laughs> She throws them into the sea and they're still pinched together. <laughs> and they're just like. <laughs> you should have saved some for when you're hog tied and bound and about to be transported. Mm. There's, there was um, a chef who got really annoyed at me in Barcelona a few years ago because I was watching this crab crawl free. And like it, it you know, like how they, you know, in Barcelona they put it out on like a big mm. thing or whatever. And this, this, this crab crawled off the thing, fell off. And was going back. Oh, oh, sorry, I wasn't quite in Barcelona. I was just outside Barcelona. Mm. I was at Soho Beach Club Barcelona. <laughs> <laughs> and it was there. And it was going back towards like outside. Uh. And the chef literally was like, what the fuck? And I was like, uh, sorry. <laughs> sorry. You lost the chef. Yeah. Snitches get snitches. You're not going to fucking grass him up, are you? No. We've been going for a very long time. Yeah, we yeah, should, should we wrap it up? Should we stop the episode there? I mean, we did. We did. A, we didn't do our prediction. We did a bit. Oh, we haven't even done our super forecasting. Okay, very quickly. No um, one's still listening. Does Trump win in 2024? I'm going to say no. I, I don't know. Okay. What do you think, Lily? Yes. I'm going to say no, but very narrow. It's very close. Extremely narrow. It's, it's probably too close to call. What, does he win against the lobster? or <laughs> <no>? <laughs> Who wins in the fridge? Trump or the lobster? Who, who wins in a fight, Biden or Trump? Trump. Biden goes down fast and hard. I think Trump's so unfit. Biden's like... You've fucking seen Joe Biden, bro. But he's only like two years older than Trump. No, but Trump would be like the concrete wall thing that you were talking about. <laughs> <laughs> when I get it. <laughs> Will... Trump's, Trump does that thing where he's like, I was already free. minutes <laughs> ago. <laughs> <laughs> Will Keir Starmer be Prime Minister? Yeah. I think... Yeah, I think he will. Yeah. Yeah. Um, will global temperatures be higher in 2024 than they were in 2023? Yes. Also that. Here's hoping. <laughs> Ava doesn't understand global warming. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> what a lovely mild December we just had. What so nice for a change. Will X go bankrupt? <laughs> I don't know because they keep attra- they keep attracting advertisers, but they're just like loopy ones. 
they're going to earn a shitload of money this year because they've opened it up to um, election campaigns. Mm. Election advertising will be on there. And the Americans will pay. They don't have a cap, do they? They'll be paying mm. big money. What other things can I ask you to predict? Will Alan Titchmarsh be on the Epstein list? <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> no. Um, will Will Taylor Swift be the largest by gate receipts art performing artist in 2024? Are you calling her fat? No. What Poll. Next, but the largest what? By gate receipts, by ticket by sales. Will she have the biggest tour in 2024? Well, it's already sold out, isn't it? But I'm asking if someone else could come along and knock her off the top spot. Well, I don't see how. Really? No, there's no one with that level of like, she's a juggernaut of touring. Con You're definitely thing. calling that fat. Have when you, you say watched that. it? Yeah, that's what, that's what I meant. Yeah, <laughs> okay, thanks. Sorry. Did you watch it? Did you watch the uh, the three and a half hour concert? You can't no, say I believe it or not. Available? Oh, yeah. Okay. I, actually, I actually didn't actually know what you were talking about when you said it. I, was like, I don't know what this was. Can I? I gave. I. At Christmas, I thought it would. The food bank, I gave them like three digital gift cards and I said, like, for to watch. The 1989 movie because it's really expensive it's mm -hmm. like 15.50 or whatever it is to watch it so i gave three gift cards and the woman i gave it to at the food bank was was really annoyed at me <laughs> she was like what the fuck is this <laughs> i was like I, I i thought that'd be a nice like extra you could give to like a couple of families she really didn't like it at that's all really funny. I, that's really nice I don't know it. how i'm gonna go back there this no. week <laughs> you do it again. I was you like, only like you don't understand what a food bank is. Either. I thought it was a nice Christmas gift. Yeah, she did not get it. No, got laughed out of the food bank. No. Get out no. of here! Don't darken our door again. Yeah. Anything else you think we can predict? Paul Joe, super forecasters. Um, what what would the audience like to see from us this year? What would you watch on Paul Joe? Yeah, sure, would, I guess. Would it be Ollie biting a goat? I think they probably would like to I, watch that. I think they would watch Who that. would you most like Ollie to interview this year? Oh, Ava. A serious suggestion. That's good. Thank you. <laughs> what does that mean? <laughs> you're the, you're the, you two have spent half the podcast calling me and Taylor Swift fat. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Ava, you wouldn't have to worry about fighting the lobster. You could just sit on it. <laughs> What's that? Thank you very much for listening yeah. to the Politics Joe podcast. Uh, we will see you on the next one. Yeah. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.